This tutorial is all about how the rate of chemical reactions differs and how you can go about measuring the rate of a chemical reaction. Black pages such as this one show the specification, in other words what you need to know to pass the exam. So some chemical reactions such as rusting shown here are very slow, whereas others like this explosion shown here are very fast. Here's four examples of chemical reactions, but the specification says you only have to know three of them, uh, that the slow reactions involve rusting, but also decomposition of food is slow, of course. Uh, the fast reactions you need to know are both burning and explosions. When we measure the rate of anything, for example the rate of a car moving in physics, we measure it per unit time, or per second, or per hour. Uh, it's similar for rates of reaction, so we measure the rate at which something is made, a product is made. For example, it might be the rate at which a gas is made in cubic centimetres per second, or per minute if it's a slow reaction. Or it might be the rate at which a solid is made, for example, in grams per second, or grams per minute. If you're collecting a gas in a chemical reaction, you might collect it, for example, uh, over water here or in a gas syringe here, and you'd measure not only the volume of the gas being produced, but also you'd have to measure it at time intervals, for example, every 10 seconds until the reaction had completed. Doing that, we tend to get a line like this one, um, and you'll see these commonly on exam questions with time along the bottom and the product up the side. Note that the reaction is fastest at the beginning, slows down uh, as the concentration of the reactants decreases until eventually the reaction stops. And you can tell when it stops, it stops at the point where the graph levels out, for example here at 90 cubic centimetres of gas. In the previous example we were measuring cubic centimetres of gas and we we're measuring seconds, so the units for that one would be in cubic centimetres per second. This chemical reaction shows some marble chips dissolving in some hydrochloric acid, but instead of collecting the gas, we're following the loss in mass of the container as the carbon dioxide escapes, and we'd be measuring that um, every 10 seconds or so. Here, the shape of the graph is reversed because the scale is reversed on the left-hand side. It's showing the mass which has been lost, starting at the top at zero and going down to a maximum mass lost of 0.9 grams, uh, in 150 seconds or thereabouts. So in that example, because the units on the left-hand side were in uh, grams and the units along the bottom were in seconds, then you would measure the rate of the reaction in grams lost per second, grams per second. There's various things you need to do in order to answer questions on this topic. For example, you need to know the names of some laboratory apparatus that you might use for these kind of reactions. You'd be expected to perhaps plot some graphs um, if you were given some data. You might be expected to say when the reaction was fastest and when it was slowest. And you might particularly be asked to read off values off a graph like you would have to, for example, in maths. One of the more difficult things you have to do is to compare the rate of reaction by comparing the gradients of the graphs. Looking at the, some of those experimental setups again, this piece of equipment here, you have to be able to identify, it's a conical flask. And this piece of equipment here, again you have to be able to identify this, this is called a gas syringe. There's just one or two chemical reactions where you can't follow the rate of the reaction as it proceeds. You have to just time the length for the reaction to take place. One of these is called the disappearing cross experiment. It's a reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium thiosulfate, which makes a precipitate of sulfur. In this case, you might be asked to judge which is the fastest reaction by looking at which one takes the shortest time. And so in summary, the rate of the reaction measures how much product is formed in a fixed time period or per second and common units for rate of reaction are grams per second and cubic centimetres per second where there's a gas involved. The next thing you need to be able to do is to interpret graphs of chemical reactions to tell when the reaction is fastest, slowest, when it's stopped and so on and so forth. Starting first with a graph, let's have a look at this one. Well, like most chemical reactions, this uh, reaction is fastest at the beginning. We can tell it's fastest at the beginning because the gradient is at its steepest. That's because 
the reactants are at their most concentrated at the beginning, but as the reactants are used up, they become less concentrated, the reaction slows down because there are less collisions between particles per second, until eventually the reaction finishes, and this finishes because one or other or both of the reactants have run out. You can tell when the reaction's finished by when the graph plateaus or flattens out. We can also interpret data from a table to tell us which is the fastest of two reactions. Here, the reaction at uh, 20 seconds is fastest at 30 degrees because here we've produced 51 cubic centimetres after 20 seconds, but at 20 degrees only 26 cubic centimetres. The other way we can compare the rate of reaction is by how long the reaction takes. The one at 20 degrees has stopped at 120 seconds, because beyond 120 seconds, the volume of the gas produced doesn't uh, increase anymore. However, the one at 30 degrees is faster because that one has stopped by 80 seconds. Uh, beyond 80 seconds, again, no more gas is produced. Here's a past paper question. Ryan and Naomi investigate the reaction between magnesium and hydrochloric acid. Magnesium chloride and hydrogen are made. Write the word equation for this reaction. Well, this is a doddle because we're told that magnesium and hydrochloric acid are the reactants. If you write big like I'm going to, then it might be better to write acid underneath rather than go on to the next line. And an arrow rather than an equals, although they will accept an equals, but it, an arrow is better. And then the products are magnesium chloride. Again, I'll write the chloride underneath so I can fit it in. And also then a plus to show it's the other product is hydrogen. Diagram shows the apparatus they use. Well, what they've got is a magnesium powder. They say they've got 0.1 grams of magnesium powder reacting with hydrochloric acid, and there's a gas syringe collecting the gas. We're asked to say what time the reaction finishes. Well, that'll be at the point at which no more gas is made. The safest time to say would be at 80 seconds because that's reached the maximum and it doesn't go any more after that. And complete the sentence the reaction is fastest between 0 seconds and 20 seconds. And that's because between those two times we've got 50 cubic centimetres, whereas between the next 20 second period there's only 30 extra. And there's your answers. The answers are pretty much as I gave them. They will accept a symbol equation, but just be careful that you get the symbol equation correct and you get the right symbol, so it's better to go for the answer that they ask you for. Finally on this topic, you have to explain why a reaction stops and to recognise the idea that uh, the amount of product that you get is going to be related to the amount of reactants that you use and one of the reactants is liable to be used up faster than the other one and that's called the limiting reactant. Here we've got two lines drawn on the same axes for the same type of chemical reaction but they differ because one of them has the acid being 50 cubic centimetres over 200 grams uh, of acid per cubic decimeter or per litre, whereas the second has 50 cubic centimetres, same volume, but half as concentrated. Now, if the marble chips are in excess in both cases, that means that the reaction is going to finish when the acid is used up. Now, because A has got twice as much acid in that 50 cubic centimetres as B has, because the concentration is double, then A is going to give you twice as much gas as B. And secondly, because A is more concentrated, then the initial rate of reaction for A is going to be faster. This second situation is a little different because here we've got 50 cubic centimetres of three uh, concentrations of acid, a concentration of two, concentration of one, and a concentration of 0 0.5. But in this case, they're all reacting with the same mass of magnesium. And in this case, the axis acid is in excess, which means there's more than enough of it, and that means that the 0.12 grams of magnesium is the limiting reactant. It's going to stop the reaction when all of the magnesium has been used up. And because there's a set amount of magnesium in every case, that means there's going to be a set amount of gas produced in every case. So here, all make the same volume of gas because the amount is fixed by the fixed amount of magnesium which is used up, but the reaction rates differ because the concentration of the acids differ. The A is more concentrated, therefore has a steeper graph. So just uh, recapping that the reaction finishes 
because one or other of the reactants has all been used up.